This episode brought to you by Full Sail University. Emerge yourself in the world of filmmaking from every angle. nostalgia critic guy remember it so you don't have to the 90s was certainly the era of bratty kids wasn't it long gone were the days of kids getting into trouble by accident 90s brats got into trouble on purpose and were out to break whatever and whoever they wanted reigning in a new decade of rebellious delinquents and at the beginning of this shift was the unbelievably immature, ridiculous, stupid as hell movie written by the guys who wrote Edward People vs. Larry Flint and Dolomite is my name? Wow, that sent that score up. Released in 1990, Problem Child did not receive much love from critics when it came out. This isn't surprising as, well, it's a really stupid movie. It's incredibly mean and violent, which would be fine if it wasn't so incredibly dumb and idiotic. But much to my everlasting shame, I kinda love it for that. Okay, here's the thing. Everything said about this movie is true. It is hopelessly moronic and childish. But it's a movie about a snot-nosed little brat that feels like it was written by a snot-nosed little brat. Being a snot-nosed little brat myself in the 90s, I felt like this movie gave me all the crude, cartoony, mean-spirited fantasies that a lot of children like me had at that age. This might be why the film was such a hit, resulting in a sequel as well as a cartoon series soon after. But is it actually good? How do I put this? I don't think the film cares. It's not setting out to impress, delight, and show off. It's setting out to mock, laugh, and get in trouble which in some respects, it did get in. People walked out at test screenings. It still sits at 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. People even protested the poster for animal abuse. It lives in a sadistic, adolescent world, and honestly, I think it's aware of that. But 30 years later, does that equal out to any value for adults? Let's look at this masterpiece of idiocy to find out. This is Problem Child. We open with our main character, Junior, played by Michael Oliver, being left at a doorstep by his mother, presumably with a note that says feed him lots of milk. Or maybe not. <laughs> well, that calls for immediate abandonment. The credits roll as Junior is passed from house to house, each one falling victim to his chaos. Uh, that needs a recall. I love that they drop him off via basket, despite him being too big as he gets older. It's even the same basket, like each house held onto it just in case they wanted to ditch him. It's that kind of mean-spirited movie. Oh, so you want to play rough, huh? I like a comedy where half the footage can be deleted scenes from The Good Son. Meanwhile, two parents named Ben and Flo, played by Jason Ritter and Amy Yesbeck, go to a fertility clinic where they get some bad news told in the worst way. The test came back positive. <laughs> That's good. No, positive is bad. No, positive is good. Negative is bad. No, negative is good. You see, you are positively infertile. This is the childish bad taste you're in for. If you're not laughing by now, you're gonna hate the hell out of this. He continues to explain the problem using a model. This is your uterus. Yellow thing is your ovaries. And this... You know what? It doesn't matter, because you don't even have a yellow thing, and your green thing is brown. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! By the gods that curse me for having me like films like Ace Ventura, Happy Gilmore, and Maximum Overdrive, this really makes me laugh! That purple thing is your cervix. <laughs> Meanwhile, we see Junior is dropped off at an orphanage where he takes pictures of the nuns naked, still riding that 80s PG into the 90s. And he gets some laughs from the kids showing how nasty the food is. Ow! Hey, lady, hands off the merchandise! Get a hear out of that thing! Okay, so Junior's performance in this is... perfectly obnoxious. He makes big faces, smiles at his own jokes, always shouts his punchlines. Much like a real mean kid who thinks he's hilarious would. I want these pots so shiny I can see my face in them. This one kinda looks like you! 
Again, if you give into the idea that this is a film about a bratty, attention-hungry delinquent written in the style a bratty, attention-hungry delinquent would write in, he works well. If you're not down for that, you might see him as an evil Ronald McDonald puppet you want to smack. But either way, he's giving his all. There's so many films where the child actors are wooden or not focused or are just saying things in a way that sounds cute. This kid knows he's a little shit in this movie and acts accordingly, matching the rest of the film's immature tone perfectly. He even looks up to mass murderers. Yeah, that's the side plot. He turns on the TV to find a psychopath named the Bowtie Killer, played by Michael Richards, is recaptured and put back in jail. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just misunderstood. Nobody cares about me but me. Oh, too easy. I need a challenge. The nuns are so pissed off at Junior's constant attacks on them that they tell the head of the adoption agency, Mr. Peabody, played by Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, this film was getting too quiet and subtle. That he has to go. He's evil! He has a wicked mind. Look what he did in art class. Skeletons. Headless corpses. Monsters devouring human flesh. Has he been reading the Bible again? Junior likes the idea of being kicked out and tries insulting Mr. Peabody to make it go faster. <laughs> What's so funny? You are, you stupid dick! Same rating as Frozen, folks! Maybe uh, what maybe. the child the is trying to say right. is that... My God! Which one's the child and which one's Godfrey? While being part of a pen pal program, Junior writes to the Bowtie Killer who confuses it for another killer named JR. I love how afraid even the guards are to be around this guy. I have to say, this follow up to the Seinfeld finale is more violent than I thought it would be. Ben and Flo decide to adopt, and Peabody pushes Junior as the perfect child. I'll admit, I love the big selling point is that he wears a bow tie, not knowing it was inspired by a serial killer. Hey, we must have gotten a pick of the litter. Look, everyone's come out to see him off. <laughs> Just like when I left Catholic school. Here, kitty kitty. No, no, Junior, make nice with kitty. He just got used to his cat sound effects that are in everything. So what do you think, big guy? Well... There sure are a lot of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> and with this new miniseries coming out this year, you're sure to love them even more. They invite over his new grandpa, played by Jack Warden, and tell him there's a new bundle of joy in their lives. You and Flo cooked up a cute little kid for my campaign! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought you were getting fatter, Mama. And here I thought doing that Mel Brooks film put the kibosh on that! Junior sets the room on fire and blames it on one of the toys malfunctioning. The grandfather doesn't trust him. Sit in my ass, get rid of them. It's the last time I set foot in this house. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I get it. I get when people say they don't like this movie. It's completely understandable. But watch this on a loop. Tell me those aren't the gifts they play in heaven. Stephen Hawking's laughing his ass off at this. Get rid of that kid. Oh, get rid of him. Ben is convinced that both occurrences were accidents and stands by that Junior is still a good little boy. I want to be a great dad, and you know what? I will never be too busy to sit down and listen to what's on my son's mind over a nice cup of hot cocoa. John Ritter really is the perfect choice for this nice father being driven to insanity. For most of his career, Ritter was always seen as the nice guy, the goofball, just trying to do good. But as he got older, he tried out more edgy material, revealing he had a risque side that balanced out with his zany side, resulting in that uncle that told you old, but still inappropriate jokes you couldn't help but laugh at. This was in the middle of him trying to find that edge. So when you see him as the nice guy who lets everybody take advantage of him, you're waiting, and seemingly, so is he for him to crack. My dad was really proud. Blow it out your ass. Every second, it looks like he's about to go berserk. I keep thinking he's gonna make that face Bilbo makes when he tries to steal the ring from Frodo. We're never gonna get rid of you. You're here forever. <laughs> He takes Junior camping, which leads to some great animal cries from his slingshot. Ah, ah, it's no deal for campsite. But he doesn't get along with the other kids, so he pisses on the fire. Can't all be winners. Wow, is that a weak fire? Is he the dirt diggler of hoses? I bet you've never been camping before. It's so much fun. Junior lures a bear to the camp, but of course, Ben thinks it's just his friend in disguise. This is great. This is great, bro. <laughs> He's not so bad. I'm kind of fascinated by how intriguingly disinterested this kid is. 
Yeah, we could die, but doesn't mean I can't enjoy the mustard on my cheek. So that's supposed to not be the guy in the bear suit, right? They put together Junior was behind the scheme, and Ben tries to figure out how to punish him. Children often misbehave just to get attention, and we should resort to discipline only when other forms of positive reinforcement have failed. Like if I tell myself this is objectively a good movie, maybe I'll finally see it as that. Rah, dickhead. Leave me alone, I still like it! Short films by a pretentious bald man. The light bulb. Fin. Symbolic goat. Fin. Not everyone can be great at film, but you can by going to Full Sail University. Working in the film industry is an exciting and rewarding experience. You know you want to be a part of it, but you do not know where to begin. You should check out Full Sail University, where you can learn all aspects of filmmaking in cinematography, either on campus or online. A poorly edited running joke. I'm chap- Fin. Full Sail's Film Bachelor's degree program immerges you in the world of filmmaking from every angle. You'll gain hands-on experience while learning what it's like to work on a large-scale production from start to finish, giving you a feel for the role each crew member plays and allowing you to specialize in the ones where your strengths and interests lay. Drawing of Invisible Man with Sharpie on black construction paper. Fin. The Digital Cinematography Online Bachelor's Degree program merges the artistic concepts of traditional filmmaking I'm with the technical tools used in everything from documentary filmmaking to commercial production and web video, preparing you to be a jack of all trades in small crew productions. One second later. Fin. These degrees are offered in an accelerated format to get you in the field faster. I'm chef! hands on projects, industry experience, faculty, and professional equipment and sets, you'll be prepared to pursue your passion. A title card with the word Fin. 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 Full sale clients have gone on to work on some pretty incredible films and TV shows like Game of Thrones, Avengers Endgame, Joker, and The Mandalorian, just to name a few. Man losing eyebrows with pencil. Fin. I if you want to find out more about these film programs and how to get started, visit fullsale.edu slash nostalgia critique. Again, that is fullsale.edu slash nostalgia critique. A poor French, possibly Jamaican accent, advertising good advice. Go to fullsale.edu slash nostalgia critique to find out more today. Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. So the family goes to a birthday party that requires Halloween costumes. Don't act like that's not a thing. But Junior doesn't seem to fit in well. He's a new boy. But he can't play with us. He's got cooties. Now come on, they almost have a vaccine for that. Ben tries to make Junior feel better by giving him something special. My grandfather gave this to me just before he died. What is it? It's a hardened prune. My grandfather became a little senile toward the end. He thought it resembled Roosevelt. All right, we may have found an heirloom more crazy than Watkins' pocket watch. In one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. This has pretty much no impact on Junior as he sabotages the party, making everybody's life a living hell. Oh, it's deleted. Flo demands that Ben gives Junior the discipline he deserves. Here, be a man. I'm gonna brush his hair so hard Barbie would be jealous. He finds he can't spank him, but does decide to take back his allowance. The whole buck? That's right, now. Just hand it over. I wonder if he's got changed for a 20. Ah, the sound of the last parent dragging their kid out of the theater not knowing what they got themselves into. At a baseball game, Ben's father puts up a big sign, which surprisingly never plays into any pranks, because it looks like he's running for mayor. Which also has a pretty weak payoff. It really doesn't matter who wins or loses, just so long as Big Ben wins for mayor. <laughs> 
come on, man. You have no experience. You should clearly run for president. It looks like Junior is up to bat, and he takes the role a little too seriously. Whoa. Are you nuts? I have a feeling they cut away from the violence so they could keep this film PG. Not that there aren't a million other things that should get it a higher rating. But ironically, the crowd's reaction and the shot of the players on the ground actually seems more graphic somehow. We've adopted Satan. Yes, I knew this was a sequel! Junior finds out he's about to be taken back to the orphanage, but when Ben finds out he's been returned 30 times, he decides he doesn't want to be 31. It's easy to give up on a kid. Damn straight it is. But problems don't just go, Flo, you know? God bless how stupid this movie is. But Junior doesn't believe him and tries driving off with the car. Ben still gives him encouragement despite almost killing him. Look at you handle this, baby. I'm, I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> Oh, he got one of the mannequins too! Oh wait, that was supposed to be a real person. Well, on the big screen, I'm sure it's harder to notice. After Ben pays for the damages, completely wiping him out, the film inevitably asks, how dark can we go? Oh, whose father hasn't tried that? Right? But it looks like the Bowtie Killer escapes prison, and I kinda love that this works. And he makes his way to meet up with Junior, who thinks he's a criminal. I mean, I don't know, a crime was about to be committed here. I drove a thousand miles to hang out with a seven-year-old. I'm gonna be eight in two weeks! Junior says he's his uncle, which gets the parents excited that he might take Junior away. I just love that Ben all this time is holding on to the pillow, as if he's still waiting for the right moment to kill this brat. I ain't been with a woman in 15 years. Uh, how dark will this go again? Did you say 15 years? Oh, okay, not that dark. The next morning, Ben finds the bowtie killer kidnap Flo and Junior, and in keeping to the absolute rottenness of this movie, he's pleased as hell. Goodbye, Junior! Oh, I am so sad to see you go! A hundred thousand dollars? Ha! Made a kid's cartoon out of this, you say? He discovers, though, that Junior drew a nice picture and held on to the prune. Aw, maybe he wasn't worth suffocating. The killer stuffs Flo into a suitcase. Oh, he didn't kill her, she's still alive, so that totally makes sense. And he tells Ben to meet him at the circus. I've never been to the circus before. Yeah, well, I hate circuses. Nothing worse than a bunch of clowns trying to make you laugh. That was literally the sum up on Rotten Tomatoes. Ben comes to save him, but Junior kicks his own way out of his clutches. Come on, let's have some kicks. Good idea! I'm actually shocked the film was mature enough not to put a sound effect over that crotch shot. It actually feels a little weird without one. Dare I say, not right. I'm sorry, but I gotta put one in to balance out the universe. Don't worry, I'll make it especially hard and crunchy. Sorry, there's no such thing as a quiet kick to the balls. Junior runs away with the money and stumbles into the middle of the show. I'll get you now! However, did this guy get recaptured? He's so good at keeping a low profile. He very randomly decides to run away. I guess he didn't want the money? Yeah, it was worth it for this. To hell with you, Hobbs! But Ben and Junior chase him down. Faster, son, faster! Go, go! I almost killed my son with a pillow! You think shooting Stanley Spadowski is gonna cost me any sleep? They stop the car, Flo goes flying into another vehicle, the killer is arrested, but again, how dark are we willing to go? My only regret is stay tuned. I'm sorry for all those bad things I did. If you come back, I promise I'll never do anything naughty again. Starting to see why there weren't many emotional moments in this. Daddy, come back! I love you! Um... Here's a pig farting on Flo. <laughs> it's not much better, but it feels more familiar. Now, of course, the prune is what stopped the bullet! Movies! And I have to give Ritter credit for how seriously he said this. No, I'll be alright, officer. He got me in the prune. Okay. There should be a BAFTA award for that line delivery alone. Now, you're not gonna hold me to all that stupid drunk I said about being nice, are you? We need a sequel, don't we? The film ends literally teasing na 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 na, -na to us. 
Which is honestly the most appropriate note this film could go out on. And that was Problem Child. It's not the worst film these writers have worked on. This movie is one of the most immature things you could watch. It's crude, raunchy, dumb, and like I said, feels like a nasty little boy wrote it. But it's such an unfiltered and raw way that nasty little boy wrote it, I can't help but be drawn in by it. It's like someone gave that little toady from A Christmas Story millions of dollars to do whatever he wants. I can't act like that's great filmmaking, but it is fascinating to witness. I hate admitting that as this is such a ridiculous, attention-hungry film, but I remember when I was a ridiculous, attention-hungry kid. And I feel like this captured the energy, imagination, meanness, and sure, childish stupidity of that age. It's bad in the same way a rotten kid plays a prank at a school play. You don't encourage it, but you are secretly giggling covering your mouth. Look, I can't defend this as something that's very redeemable. I don't even know if I'd recommend it to that many people. But what I can say is, if you remember yourself at your brattiest, when you were being punished, when whatever you thought of, no matter how stupid, was the funniest thing in the world to you, this movie captures that. And I'm sorry, I can't help but feel that's something to sort of admire. It's loud, obnoxious, and does a ton of things that make no sense, but so did you when you were little. And if you're curious to revisit that in the most rotten of ways, God help me, this might just be the film for you to check out. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to. Rah, dickhead. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and uh, this week we are doing uh, one called Family Promise. And uh, again, there's been a lot going on, not just COVID, but uh, Hurricane Laura, uh, you know, ha has done a whole lot of damage. And so I was trying to find one that kind of tapped into both of them. And uh, what Family Promise does, uh, they develop community based affiliate programs that serve children and families experiencing or at risk of homelessness and provides ongoing support for these affiliates to empower families to achieve and maintain maintain the sustainable independence. Uh, so they help people, you know, who have lost their homes, you know, they have a special section for uh, Hurricane Laura, and they also help people uh, who have been affected by COVID, uh, losing their jobs and health and so on and so forth. Uh, they provide technical assistance and expertise to a national network of more than 200 affiliates in 43 states, mobilizing 200,000 volunteers and serving approximately 125,000 homeless family members each year. Uh, I mean, those are big numbers, man. As you uh, heard there, too, you can volunteer as well if you don't have money to donate. Or as I always say, even if you can't do, either spread the word because uh, there's always so many people doing so many good things and they deserve the attention uh, and, and just the awareness and the support and just seeing if other people can donate, volunteer, that they just, they deserve so much. So please definitely take a look. See if you can share it around. It has four stars on uh, Charity Navigator. Uh, be wonderful if you could get the word out. Uh, word out about them. Thank you so much.